Drawing the attention of the hybrid creatures that inhabited the forest, Buggy's detached hand clutched desperately at the unruly green afro of his opponent. The air crackled with tension as Gaimon, with a determined scowl on his face, discharged his pistol towards Buggy. As each bullet shot through his cape, Buggy exhibited a surprising agility despite his short stature. His legs carried him away from the line of fire to his dismay, weaving through the labyrinth of trees in great haste. One Piece. Story was made by Aichiro Oda. Chapter 46. The Uninvited Guest. Hey, you damn geezer, Sanji called out to the head chef. I'm the assistant head chef of this place, so just what do you mean exactly when you say that I'm not needed? Annoyed, Zeph responded without hesitation. You cause too much trouble with the guests, and if they happen to be female, you drool all over them. You also can't cook a decent meal to save your life. You're just unnecessary baggage, holding the restaurant down. And, as you probably know, none of the cooks want you here as well. So whether it be a pirate or something else, it's just better for you to get the hell out of my restaurant. Sanji walked towards Zeph and placed his hand against the owner's collar. So that's what you wanted to say to me all along, you damn geezer? Ignoring all your other comments, if there's one thing I won't stand for, it's someone insulting my cooking. No matter what you say, I'm staying here. Got that? To his surprise, Zeph flipped Sanji against a nearby table. How dare you grab the collar of the head chef? Damn it! The head chef couldn't help but looked back at him as Sanji declared, you can try to chase me out all you want, but I'll continue to be a cook here, you hear, until the day you die, at the very least. Zeph, walking away, told him simply, I ain't dying, I'll live for another 100 years. Pretty mouth for a damn geezer, aren't you? Sanji retorted. The chefs in the kitchen exchanged whispers. Did you hear Sanji just now? One asked. Yeah, he definitely wants to become the next head chef, another replied. Luffy laughed as Sanji got back to his feet. All right, he gave you permission. Now we can be pirates. As if, he fired. The scene shifted as the chef resumed his duties, serving Luffy's table. However, a noticeable change occurred when serving Nami, as he addressed her with unusual politeness. Forgive me for that ruckus just now. Sanji apologized. As an apology, please enjoy this fruit Macedonia and this glass of Grand Marnier. Playing along, Nami thanked him. Oh, thank you so much. You're so nice. Oh, it's nothing. Feeling neglected, Usopp voiced his discontent. Hey, what about us? This is gender discrimination. I'll sue, you love crazy cook. I already gave you some tea. You could at least say a word of thanks for that, punk, Sanji retorted. What? You want to start something, is that it? I ain't gonna go easy on you, get him, Zoro. While Nami ate her meal to her delight, the swordsman shrugged off the comment. Get him yourself. Usopp, not satisfied, pointed at his plate. You haven't even cleared away my plates. But you still have mushrooms left. Finish it, Sanji insisted. I left them on purpose because I hate mushrooms. He pressed his nose against his face. I was poisoned by one when I was a kid. Well, this one ain't poisoned, so eat up, long nose, the chef encouraged. Seizing her opportunity, Nami intervened. Please don't fight just because of me. Anything for you, miss? Sanji responded instantly. Just who the hell's fighting for you? Usopp barked back. Undeterred, Nami, holding the chef's face thoughtfully, continued, By the way, Mr. Cook. Yes. 
The food here's just a tad too expensive for me, she admitted with a playful smile. His heart started to pound in his chest. Then it shall be free of charge to you, miss. Thank you so much. Nami hugged him, eliciting an explosion of delight from the chef. But Sanji had a condition. He turned to Usopp with a deadpan expression. You're paying, though. What? A sigh escaped from Zoro as he observed the unfolding drama. You're a real witch, aren't you? He mumbled to Nami across the table. With a hearty stride, Sanji wandered away, leaving Luffy to enjoy his tea. This tea's great, he remarked casually. Nami giggled. You fellas better watch out, too. Spotted a group of girls entering the restaurant, Sanji instantly came to greet them. Sanji, it's been a while, they greeted. Ah, good to see you again, Roxanne, Sanji greeted, opening his arms with a loving welcome. Nami and Usopp sighed simultaneously. Damn lech. Noticing his co-worker's distraction, Sanji retorted, Hey, Aaron boy, the hell are you sitting around and drinking tea for? He slammed his foot against Luffy's head, causing him to faceplant into the teacup, much to his surprise. Zoro and Nami exchanged glances, silently observing as their captain was taken by the neck by the chef. Bring out the hot towels when the customers come in, Sanji commanded Luffy. Yes, sir. Two days later, a surprising incident takes place. The shattering sound of glass echoed through the dining room, causing chaos among the customers as they caught sight of a pirate flag in the far distance. It's Don Krieg's pirate ship, panicked voices rose. A skull with two hourglasses at its side to threaten their enemies. There's no doubt about it. That's Krieg's flag. Why is he here? In the kitchen, chefs were just as frightened as the customers. Look what you did, Patty. They actually came here. So are you gonna chase them off for us, Mr. Tough Guy? It. It can't be, stammered Patty. The fleet admiral who commands over 5,000 pirates is coming all the way out here just to avenge one of his underlings. Well, you better believe it. His ship's coming this way right now, one of the chefs responded. Within the going merry, Nami hid behind the scene while Usopp panicked to Zoro. This is real bad. Shouldn't we be running away? But Zoro looked at the gigantic ship calmly. Bro, let's set sail. We don't want to die, Yosaku bellowed with Johnny. Talk about a huge ship, Luffy joyfully said to Sanji. Gin must have come here to repay his debt to you. Somehow I don't think that's the case. But it is strange, the cook relayed while Zeph looked at the ship on the balcony. The mighty pirate ship was a very large galleon ship, almost triple the size of the ocean-going restaurant. It had the figurehead of a saber-toothed tiger, appearing as though it was a ghost ship. That ship, it's in complete shambles, Sanji observed, to turn a gigantic galleon of that size into that sad state. That's no work of humans. They must have been caught up in some natural disaster. The front doors widened, revealing two figures entering the dining room, stunning both guests and cooks. With Gin on his shoulder, a large, muscular man with purple-gray hair and distinctive long sideburns along his agonizingly frail face. Don Krieg, the pirate fleet admiral, wore a brown, fur-lined coat over his yellow vest with black spot-like motifs. Around his thick neck hung a big golden chain as he muttered, Sorry for intruding, but could I have some water? And food? If it's money you want... I've got plenty. Don Krieg menacingly looked at the crowd. What? The heck? Patty was confused at the sight. That weak, worn-out looking guy is Krieg? He looks like he's starving, Luffy added as Sanji pondered. Wonder what happened. Despite it all, Don Krieg collapsed to the floor head first. Don Krieg! Gin said aloud. I'm begging you, please give him some food and water. Please save my captain, he'll die at this rate. Patty laughed at the turn of events. 
perfect, just perfect. So this is what the infamous outlaw Don Krieg looks like. Looking at the chef, Gin continued, We have money this time. We're paying customers. The chef pointed to his co-workers. Hey, contact the Marines immediately. This is the perfect chance for the government to arrest him. Don't let him have a single morsel of food. That's right. Who knows what he'll do once he gets back on his feet? The customers shared, This is retribution for all the crimes he's committed. It's only right that he should die after all he's done. The chefs pressed on. If we give him food and he recovers, it's only obvious that he'll attack our restaurant. I ain't giving him a single drop of water. On his knees, Don Krieg lowered his head to the floor and begged, I won't do anything. If you give me food, I promise I'll quietly withdraw from here. So please, please help me. Don, Don Krieg, please stop, Gin cried. A great man like you shouldn't be lowering his head. It's too shameful. I'm begging you, the admiral continued. I don't mind if it's leftovers or whatever. Please just give me anything. Anything. The customers looked down on him as Jin tried to hold back tears. Patty looked at him disgustingly with a questionable look. Trying to earn some sympathy points? Holding a plate of leftovers, Sanji swung his leg against Patty's head. Knocking him out, Sanji offered a cooked dish with some booze. Here, Gin, give this to him. Sanji! They both looked up in realization. Seizing his chance, Krieg finally scoffed his food down as he gracefully ate his meal. Thank you. Hey, Sanji, take that food back this instant. Do you have any idea what kind of man he is? A chef called out from behind, explaining, the ruler of the East Blue, the king of deceptions. That's Don Krieg for you. He started out by disguising as a Marine after escaping from prison. He then killed the Marine officer in charge of the ship and took it over. That's how he became a pirate. Since then, he attacked ports, towns, and other ships by hanging a Marine flag. And when attacking his enemies, he hangs a white flag to attack them by surprise. He's a man who will stoop to anything in order to win. And that's how he made his way to the top. His strength ain't no exaggeration either. You really think he'll just leave after eating? That's utterly impossible for him. Letting a demon like him starve to death is for the good of the world. When Karn finished speaking, Don Krieg struck Sanji, hooking him with his right hand to the ground in front of a shocked crowd. Sanji, Gin called out. Don, Don Krieg. This is different from what you promised. I guided you here because you promised not to harm this restaurant. Not only that, that man is our savior. With his left hand, his admiral locked his shoulder tightly as he screamed in agony. Ah, that was a great meal. I feel like I'm back to my normal self again. Gin! Luffy gritted his teeth. Sanji looked up as he remarked. So he reveals his fangs at last. Nice restaurant you've got here, Don Krieg claimed. I'll take it.